What is the Queen doing with her Buckingham Palace? Buckingham Palace's facade will be transformed into a vibrant rainforest tonight, marking a global conservation mission led by the Queen, a lush forest full of exotic trees celebrating the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Project will be projected onto the building ahead of this week's Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The foliage and tree silhouettes will light up the palace from 8 p.m., as 53 heads of state gather in London for the biggest summit hosted by the UK. In the run-up to the 2012 Diamond Jubilee, it was illuminated with a giant image of the Queen, formed of thousands of self-portraits by children from around Britain. And during the Jubilee concert, it became the canvas for illustrating everything from Shirley Bassey's Diamonds Are Forever to Madness Is Our House. Tomorrow night, the unique conservation project will be highlighted in Landmark ITV documentary The Queen's Green Planet, featuring the 91-year-old monarch in conversation with veteran naturalist Sir David Attenborough. More than 40 nations have already made binding commitments to the QCC, which seeks to preserve precious areas of forest for future generations. During the course of her 66-year reign, the Queen has planted more than 1,500 trees all over the world and in the documentary, the Great Grandmother discusses her commitment to a greener planet while strolling through the Buckingham Palace Garden with Sir David. At one point she jokes she won't be here to see some trees grow further. Last night South Africa became the latest country to back the Canopy Project, announcing that the nation's Nina and Tsitsikama forest complex is to be protected and preserved. The area holds a special poignancy for the Queen it is where, as Princess Elizabeth, she celebrated her 21st birthday and dedicated her life to serving the Commonwealth. The QCC initiative was launched at the last Shig meeting in Malta in 2015, when an appeal was made to preserve areas of indigenous forest to mark the Queen's lifetime of service to the Commonwealth. Conceived by Birkenhead Labour MP Frank Field, the QCC is a partnership between the Royal Commonwealth Society, Cool Earth and the Commonwealth Forestry Association. Meanwhile, Mr. Field blasted a leading anti-monarchy group which branded a plan to nominate the Queen for a Nobel Peace Prize absurd and offensive. Several Commonwealth countries are thought to be in talks to nominate the Queen for her ambassadorial role and the proposal is likely to be discussed on the margins of the Shug meeting. Graham Smith, chairman of the Republic Group, which includes a number of Labour MPS, has accused ministers and MPS of small-minded sycophancy. The Nobel Peace Prize is often controversial, but it can be said that recipients have at least done something tangible, or made some kind of sacrifice, in the pursuit of peace, he said. This is the worst kind of small-minded sycophancy from ministers and MPS who should know better. To suggest the Commonwealth plays a major role in the world is open to doubt. To claim the Queen unites and leads the Commonwealth in the pursuit of peace is as laughable as the nomination is absurd and offensive. I hope the Queen will have the decency to tell the authors of this daft idea to drop it. Mr. Field hit back, saying, if, over sixty years, the Queen's determined diplomacy in keeping the Commonwealth alive and functioning which is a model of how a multitude of nations around the world can police themselves doesn't qualify her for a Nobel Prize, it is difficult to think what more anyone can do. The idea also won backing from Lord David Howell of Guildford, a former Foreign Office Minister and President of the Royal Commonwealth Society. I think it is a good idea, he said.